it's Gavin Strange here on Editor X. I'm stoked to show you all what I've been up to on this platform. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be playing around with header scroll effects to get this cool entrance animation that leads into the rest of my site. Let's just get into it, shall we? So I've already set up the basic design of my page. It's got five different sections so far. You can see I've added these images of some of my favorite projects. Recognize this guy? Yeah. So I'm going to start with this blank section here. First things first, I'll use this inspector panel on the right here to set the minimum height of the section to 100 viewport height. That means it takes up the entire height of the viewport that it's being displayed on. By the way, this is the panel you want to use to change the size, position and behavior of any element on your site. You'll see me fiddling with stuff on here a lot throughout the class. So now I've got to add a vertical section to each side of this section here. Let's start with the left one. I'll select this gray area outside the canvas and use this little blue plus icon. So you can see this new section reaches all the way down the page. Next, I'll use the three dots to set this section as a master and mark it as a header. You can use masters to save and reuse headers, sections and footers on multiple pages. Super, super handy. In this case, we're making this section a master so we can apply special transitions later on. Hang on a bit, you'll soon see. Right, now back to the inspector panel. I'll set the scroll effect to fixed so that this left header stays in the same position as you scroll. And I'll check this to make it overlap the next section to get the effect that we're looking for. Then I'll set the width of this header to 50 viewport width so that it takes up exactly half the viewport no matter what the screen size is. Now, before I start customizing this left header, I'm going to be super responsible and use the Layers panel to rename it now and to avoid any confusion later. Use this panel to keep tabs on all the elements on your page and how they're ordered. You'll definitely thank me for this later, I promise you. Right, let's add some images to this thing. From the Add panel, I'll head over to Media and you can see that I've already uploaded some files that are ready to go. So I've actually split up one image into two. L is for left, of course. As I drag it in, you can see it automatically attaches to my header. Then I'll stretch it to take up the entire container. Now, to make these geometric curtains you saw earlier, I'll go to the decorative tab this time and add a shape. This triangle is pretty perfect. So when you're working with SVGs, you'll notice that they keep their proportions whichever way you stretch them. But since we need to distort it so it slots neatly into the corner, I'm going to use this setting icon and toggle this off. To edit the layout, we'll head back to the inspector panel. Let's position the shape to the center and the middle. Set the width and height to 100% of the section it's in, and then flip it horizontally to make it fit nice and snug in the top corner. Now, we'll go into the design tab to give this shape some depth, but still make it flow nicely with the rest of the site. So let's change it to the same black color we use for the background, then change the opacity to 60%. Amazing. So we're pretty much going to do the same thing to the right of the section. Let's add another section to the right, set this as a master and mark it as a header as well. Then we'll set the scroll effect to fixed again and make it overlap the next section. Second time around is so much easier, right? We'll change the width to 50 viewport width too. You know how it goes. We've got to rename this header as well, so let's head back to the Layers panel. Check us out being all organized. Well done. Now, I'll just head back to my media and add the right half of my image, attach it to the header, and stretch it. OK, so now instead of adding another shape from the Add panel and customizing it all over again, a little copy and paste never hurt anyone, did it? Just make sure you select the element you want to paste it to before you hit Command V. Right, one last thing. This time we'll flip it vertically. OK, so now the easiest way for me to select the main header of my site so that I can start designing it is to use the Layers panel. I told you you would thank me. From the Inspector panel, we'll change its height to 100 viewport height to match the other two headers and mark it to overlap the next section. I want to add some big bold text to the main header, 
So first I need to bring it to the front. I'll use these three dots over here in the Layers panel and choose Arrangement. From the Add panel, I'll go to Text and add the largest option I see. To be fair, we're going to need to make it much larger than that. But first, I'll change the text color to white so I can see what I'm writing in the first place. Then I'll change the font. Yeah, that looks good. Make it bold because why not? Center it and then change the line spacing to one to bring the text closer together. Now, I'll use the inspector panel again to arrange the entire text box. I'll center it and change the width to 100%. Then I'll set the text to scale from 10 to 280. Or this will make the text gradually scale between those two sizes as the screen size changes. I want to add a couple more elements, so let me just drag this up. Nice. I do want to give some sort of direction so people will know immediately what to do. So I'll add another small text box here. Again, change the color to white and add the text. Then I'll center it. I'll choose the same font as before. Set the font size there to 14 and center it from the inspect panel. In case my instructions weren't clear enough, I'm going to be adding an arrow here as well. So let's grab one of the decorative elements from the Add panel and place it here. And I'll go to Design and make that white. Again, I'll use the Inspector panel to center it, set the width and height, and then flip it horizontally so that it points downwards, of course. OK, what I'm about to show you next is super important. So you can see that on different screen sizes, the spatial relationship between these three elements is all over the place. To make sure these three elements keep a set distance from each other on all screen sizes, I'm going to select them all and stack them. So stacking elements will maintain the vertical margins between them and also prevent overlap when the screen size gets smaller. Now that the stacked elements here are in the same container, we can align all three of them simultaneously to the center and the middle. Then we'll select this scroll down text here and set the top margin to 30 pixels. This will adjust the vertical spacing between this text and the text above it. Next, we'll select the arrow and change the top margin to 24 pixels. Looking good. All right, it's time to make the magic happen. From the Layers panel, we'll start with the left header and use the Inspector panel to set up a transition. Under Scroll, I'll toggle on the transition, set the direction of the transition to move left, and set the duration to 0.5 seconds, slow enough to notice it happening. I'll keep this distance at 100% because I want the header to transition all the way off screen. We'll do the same to the right header, only this time we'll set the transition direction to the right. And then repeat this all again for the main header, but make sure that you set the transition direction upwards. Right, are you ready to see this stuff in action? <laughs> yeah, what an entrance, check that out. I think that turned out pretty awesome, what do you think? Thanks for watching this class, everyone. I hope you get inspired to use header scrolls and transitions next time you design on Editor X. Do check out my other classes in this series to see me muck about with video box and hover interactions. Bye.